Dr. David Seaman here to join us. He is an expert on inflammation and diet and health. Dr. David, welcome, man. Thanks for having me. So you are the first person to write a scientific paper on how diet causes inflammation. Tell us about that. I did that, actually. Uh, that was in 2002, and before I did that, what kind of informed me was this book here. This is actually the first nutrition book that was ever written on nutrition and inflammation. And so then I decided that I had to get information into the scientific literature, and so that took actually almost as long to write that paper as it, cost to wrote, as it took to write this book. And that paper happened to be referenced by Harvard researchers on, on two occasions and many other researchers around the world. That's amazing. Now, tell us about the state of the nutrition and diet industry right now. It's a real problem because of, of the endless confusion that, that the people are hit with in terms of, of how we view health in general. We think of it as, I need to take something for this named condition. And then we think, well, I'll try a plant-based diet or this diet or that diet for that condition as opposed to understanding the outcome of diet and nutrition, which should be, in my view, inflammation reduction. So that would be the best focus for the average person. Now, inflammation reduction, does that, how does that affect the entire body? Yes, yeah, interesting. So, so th this is the book that I wrote in 2002. And, and, and you can see that here you have, down below, you've got French fries and white bread and cupcakes. And on top, you have all the healthy vegetation stuff. So when we overeat these calories, particularly in a, in a, in a high, hypercaloric, too many calories, if you eat too many calories, especially from these foods, there's an automatic inflammation reaction that occurs right after you eat it. And if you keep doing it day in, day out, you actually end up with this chronic high sugar, high fat scenario in your body. Wow, and I, I know because I've, I've been better at it in certain times than others with my diet. You, you, at first your body tells you you need that stuff, and then once you get away from it and get into the, the leaner, greener stuff, you're, you feel so much better. Yeah, the biggest problem is that people get attached to names of diets that they think they have to adhere to, and if they fall off of they get very, very stressed out. Let's talk about that for a second, because I'm confused. I see the paleo diet, the keto diet, I hear macros, I hear all these things. There's a cookie diet. Right. Like, what, where does all that fit in? What do you feel about that? Well, well anyone can, if, if someone wants to be a vegan, they can and be anti-inflammatory. If someone wants to be paleo, they can do that and be anti-inflammatory. So my view is to do keto, paleo, uh, a a plant-based, vegan, whatever word you want to use, and then focus on the outcome of the diet rather than focusing on the name of the diet and freaking out if you fall off it by mistake. Yeah, that, that seems like great advice. Now, what was it that got you started in thinking about, obviously you're a doctor, what made you decide to get into inflammation? Well, pain and all other chronic conditions are driven by inflammation. And so I wanted to get away from targeting a named treatment for a named condition and get at the underlying cause of the various conditions. So for example, my most recent book is this book here, it's called The Deflame Diet for Breast Health and, and Cancer Prevention. And you can see right over here, the same bad french fries, cupcakes, and white bread is gonna drive breast cancer versus eating healthy anti-inflammatory foods. So this could be a keto diet here, this could be a vegan, this could be a paleo, it doesn't make any difference as long as we're avoiding these unhealthy calories. Got it, can you never have those unhealthy calories? Well, of course you can. But the way you do it is to keep track of your inflammatory markers. And the easiest one is just your waistline. No guy should ever be above a 40 inch waistline. I mean, preferably close to 35 or 32. And no woman should be at 35 or above. Both of those markers equal metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, and absolutely, have a donut or a Twinkie or pasta, whatever you like, but the point is that everybody has their own unique Twinkie donut french fry threshold. And so if you eat above your threshold and turn the flame on, then it's a problem. And you, you said, or I've heard you say before that sort of our waistline is a good indicator for eating too much of that stuff or not. Absolutely, so when you think about it, the average guy, before he started to gain weight, his waistline was typically no more than 32 inches, typically. And the average woman was typically no more than 25, 28 inches. That's what we should be the entirety of our lives. And that's all based on inflammation and diet. Yeah, well, if you, if you, if you exceed those, those measurements and particularly get above 40 inches for guys and 20 and, and 35 for women, you now become pre-diabetic. Wow, got it. So what you've done all this so far, uh, are you stopping? What's the plan for the future? No, I've got more plans. I've got more plans. So this is my first specific book, the breast cancer book, and I'm working on one for autism prevention, dealing with hypertension, high blood pressure, and the other one is depression. Excellent, now if people want to find these books and find you, where can they find you? Simple, deflame, D-E-F-L-A-M-E.com. Deflame.com. That's it. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. We'll be right back on Times Square today.